Campaigners against the Sun's page three are calling on the newspaper's advertisers to force the topless pictures to be dropped. They'll be handing out flyers outside companies like Tesco, Asda, Morrisons and Sainsbury's today. Chris Horry is author of Stick It Up Your Punter, the uncut story of the Sun newspaper. Morning, Chris. Hi there. The Sun has turned down our invitation to appear on Weekend Breakfast this morning, so it falls to you instead to give us a potted history of page three. It it started off as a bit of a page filler, didn't it? A a cheap way of filling a page. Well, that's right. I mean, we think of uh, Rupert Murdoch's papers now as sort of financial juggernauts with a lot of money, but the Sun was actually very much the underdog back in uh, November 1970 when the the feature was launched and um, often struggled with so few journalists to actually fill up the paper every day. So uh, more or less in desperation, they decided to toss in a a topless uh, glamour picture, to use the the euphemism, Um, and and, and thus the the feature uh, was born. It caused an immediate uh, stink at the time, an outrage, but the Sun rather likes it and surprised that they don't want to get involved with the debate because... Uh, part of their strategy, certainly in those days, was to be uh, constantly talked about, simply so people would rush out to the shops and see what all the fuss was about. To what extent does it still drive sales in 2012? Well, they, now, they themselves now think it's iconic. It's part of, part of the brand, as it were. So I think that there's basically no chance of uh, the sun dropping this feature. They have looked at it from time to time because they are concerned, obviously, about the effect it has on their sales to women readers. Everybody these days wants more uh, women readers. Uh, That's a change from the 70s when the media generally ignored women. Uh, But women are now going into the workforce, they're earning a lot of money, they're buying newspapers. And the one success story out there in the market really is the Daily Mail, uh, which is very appealing to women readers. So... um, it's a sort of balancing act between um, undermining the brand uh, of the sun, which is about being cheeky and fun and sexy and all the rest of it, uh, and not putting off women readers. So they do it on a case-by-case basis. Uh, and then within the office themselves, they often take a kind of sounding as to whether particular pictures are offensive or not. And it's also all about the captions. Uh, when there has been objections and revulsion against page three, it's because they've gone for the kind of leery, sneery sort of uh, caption talking about the girl. Uh, and what you find is that the uh, the captions now uh, introducing the girls are rather respectful. They, they talk, they, you know, they, they will identify them as a as a kind of keep fit person or, or somebody who's successful in their lives and just happens to like uh, looking good. Chris, thank you very much indeed. Chris Horry, Professor of Journalism at Winchester University. The comments from the advertisers all along a similar line. Let me just read out one example. This statement that we've received from Asda, they say, we've assured the campaign that we take our responsibility as a family-friendly retailer seriously and have in fact been at the forefront of campaigns that support these values. We also believe that the best way to allow our customers to express their opinions is to offer them choice. If they choose not to support a certain publication, they can do so by using the power of their purse. 7.56. So it's the...